Imagine for a second all our leaders would only work five hours per day. Would that boost their performance or would it lead to a lot of things undone? Today's guest of Leaders in Cars Getting Coffee, Lasse Reingangs, believes in the five-hour workday. I'm not sure if that's the answer to the way how we collaborate and how organizations should work, but I definitely believe that our culture around recording hours and attendance says a lot about how we collaborate. So don't miss it. Heiko and Lasse are having a controversial discussion about what it takes to only work five hours and if that's even possible. Enjoy the show. Thank you for being with us. So today on Leaders in Cars Getting Coffee, we are not driving this car. Why? Because I'm already a little bit high from it. The car worked perfectly yesterday. Now it's uh, basically pissing gasoline all over the floor. Um, why was this the perfect car for our guest today, Lasse Reingans? Uh, because Lasse did something pretty revolutionary. He moved his entire company to five hour workday, which is crazy. At the same pay, same productivity, only five hours working, sounds nuts, right? But actually, Porsche did something similar during the oil crisis with this car, which is a 1966 Porsche 912. They removed two cylinders from the Porsche 911's motor, which is the old 356 engine, and the car, because it's lighter, gets even better performance than a Porsche 911. Nimbler, more economical, because it has less stuff, which is the perfect analogy for what Lasse is doing. Unfortunately, it doesn't work, which is great because I want to grill Lasse on does this actually work? Because this doesn't work. This is old and broken. So even though I love this very much, what we're going to do is if you swing with me to the future, we're going to have our perfect stand-in car. Because if you have to let go of a Porsche, what better way to go than this? Elon's latest masterpiece, the Model 3. So we're going to go to the future. One more time, this time not in San Francisco, but in the summer of Berlin, Lasse Reingans, leaders in cars, not in a Porsche 912, but only in a Model 3. I know you're disappointed, so am I. Let's go ludicrous. Let's do this. You keep on me. So, I had a perfect car picked out for you. It's the same. I it's had the, same. the perfect car picked out for you. And I'll tell you why. Okay, first of all, I tell you why we're not driving it, okay? Come here. So, so tell me. It? Smell. Can you smell it? Yeah, you did fart. <laughs> <laughs> okay, we, st we, started, we started it this morning and it started sipping gasoline. So I thought, unless we want to do leaders in cars getting burned getting coffee. Or getting killed. Uh, we're going to take the other car over there. How boring, it's a How Tesla. How boring, it's wow. a Tesla. Should we do it? Let's do it. The door handle is an intelligence test, so let's see if you can figure it out. Normally it just comes out, I guess. Nope. They didn't have the money for that. What? I'll leave you here if it. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, okay, you passed the test. Um, I passed the test. Thanks. So you didn't help me here? I, I, did, <laughs> I did do the right thing. Lasse, I'm looking forward to it. Look here, there are the booster seats. You want one or are you good? How do I look? You, am you I can, you, am you can I put the seat enough? up. Hold on, I, I can't go further <laughs> down, so. You're just too tall. Okay, I'll rev the engine for you just once, okay? So yes. you hear it? Okay. I can hear it. You good? Wow. Pretty awesome, right? This. Wow. <laughs> so. Will, will we do some post production with it? <laughs> <laughs> we'll cut in some engines. <laughs> yeah, great. There is actually, it's funny, when you go on the right setting on the radio, you'll hear the engine spinning. Okay, so what I hear right now is that some sound engineers have just lost their jobs. They've <laughs> just lost their jobs. <laughs> okay. Well, I have to tell you, I was really looking forward to this because we really don't know each other. We've met once in the Juleps and that went up to closing time. And it was uh. a great talk. It was. It, it was, was indeed. It, it, yeah. You know, when I, I posted this on LinkedIn and I said, we spend a great night together and I thought, wow, well, I guess our wives are going to look at this and go like, <laughs> interesting, tell us more. <laughs> yeah, but that's a secret. It's our secret. It's our secret. Yeah. <laughs> and you, exactly. Oh, now, now those, it's not only Those two our... people in Vietnam who will click on this for 30 seconds, <laughs> you'll have us by the balls now. Wow. 
I can see the blackmailing. <laughs> you can see the blackmailing. <laughs> this is Lao Ta from Vietnam, <laughs> unless you give me. Okay. You've just published a book, so let yeah. me grab between your legs and. I did this is bring this book. For you. Pick it up. This is a, a five hour work revolution. And um, I don't believe him shit. I, I think the guy works 24 hours. Actually, do you know? I, I had to laugh. <laughs> yes. did, I, I Googled you, and basically, if I want to know all the newspapers in Germany, I just put in your name in Google, and then it'll be a list to Deutsche yeah. Zeit, everything. The Zeit interview? Yeah. The guy was like, uh, which one? Oh, 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 which one? <laughs> Sorry. Sorry, man. I meant the most recent. <laughs> okay, good, good to hear. Yeah. Yeah. We, and he said, but you answered my email at uh, 11.53 at night. And I was like, <laughs> boom! Busted! Busted! Boom! <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's true. Sometimes I read mails. Late you, late at so day. that's not considered work? or is no, it's not, no, What no. is work, actually? What, What's your definition of work? What's my definition? For me, I, I, this is my... This is, this is going to be the gist of what we talk about in this car because for me it took so long to find the thing that i love like the company I'm, I'm, we're building now and it's me and my wife building a company together the kids love it we spend weekends there it i can't tell you what is work and what is not work so for me the to same. stop i could i could stop being in the office at one but if i stop working i would be missing something that i love doing Yes. So you see, work work has changed over the last 50, 60, 70, 80 years from repetitive industrial work, which people didn't love, to work that people could love if they find the right job, because it's all about solutions, creativity, uh, thinking about things, and that's the difference. And so in this time, I think we have the chance, or people have the chance, to find something that inspires them, gives them energy, and they could work all day. It's the 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 it's, it's quite, I think the thing today is to find the right balance in energy giving, energy taking, and yeah, how you actually spend your time. And about the five hour workday, it's funny that people don't get this change that has taken place over the last years and think work is something you need a specific location for or a specific, specific time for. But what I see and what we find out actually is that when you leave the office at one, you take a walk you do whatever and suddenly you have the best idea and we all we all need ideas to be innovative to you know, be so what is your, your, your definition then is five hours in the office is that what you mean by uh, no it's actually some finding that I have like that that I had after we in, uh, introduced that five hour day hold on I did bring I did bring a game to us actually all right look at this this is a lot lots of papers here actually it's a printout of one of my presentations and um, I found That's this. how you do presentations with cue cards like this. Yeah, only uh, only when I get filmed in a car ah, driving through okay. Berlin. All right. So I don't know if people can actually see this. This says two point five three hours. Actually, what is me? What this says is that people in an eight-hour workday they only work two and a half hours. Two point five three. Two point five three. Don't 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 don't. It's okay. It's a it's a survey or study that has taken place in Britain, and they asked 1,500 people to write down exactly what they do in office all okay. the time. That took them an hour. That might have taken them an hour, yes. Yeah. But it showed that people work far less than even four hours. Yeah. So thinking about this, um, the five-hour workday is quite a lot of work if we manage to be focused and productive in that five hours. So what I thought about is how does the perfect work environment look like? And I came up with it or with the thought that Working eight hours leaves too little time for personal things. Hmm. So it's not about the office to have people in the office for five hours. We did start like that because yeah. I wanted to really have all the people together, find out which process work or which processes work. For me, it was two concepts. The one that we applied was mm -hmm. we don't give Complete a fuck. flexibility. We don't give a fuck when you work, you don't when give you a bleep. work. We don't, we don't give a bleep. That's what we actually learned at that bleep company with the Bleep Brothers that yeah. it, 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 it take, but it takes a high level of self-organization. Yes. Also, if you tell them, it doesn't matter when you work, it doesn't matter how many vacation you take. Yeah. And I have to tell you, I was first super peeved and pissed off when I saw the media echo that you got for five hour mm -hmm. workday. Because I was like, 
what the fuck? They're doing this is old school. This yeah, is old we, work. We, we, we're doing, do whatever the fuck you want. Yeah. And you get all the attention. I, I could have said we do five hours. I don't know how many hours we do, <laughs> you know? Yeah. But it, we were more sort of like gig economy. Anything yeah. goes anytime. Um, but but we, we, we see it's difficult. It is. This is not easy either. Five hour work days are very hard work. Uh, and what, what studies show about the f complete flexibility is that people actually work more, yep. take less vacations, yes. and they burn out. Which uh, relates to the next card. Which presents the next card. This is a burnout rate in Germany. And it's getting higher and higher every year. This is difficult, you know. I'm, right now, two years after we, we implemented the five hour workday concept, yeah. um, it's not about the hours anymore. It's really about self-organization, about processes, about culture, about people, um, helping people, coaching people to be in their potential. Because that's the thing we learned. It's all about the single individual. They need to be in a position without fear, where they can release all the, their knowledge and their potential to be happy. Because when they're happy, they can deliver the best job or yeah. the best outcome. Um, we have this deal in the office. I ask them every every other month if they want to continue with this yeah. five-hour concept. Oh, nice. Or if we should stop it because it's a lot of work. It takes so much discipline um, and they love it. They love it because what they do on a, on a free basis is they meet after one. They, have, they cook lunch together. They go out for sports. We do team events every other So month. we're back to the question, what is work, right? Because if yes. you spend time together having lunch, probably if you're with the right kind of people, something will come up that might spill over into yeah. your work time, yes, right? Yes, but they have always the chance to leave office early and to do whatever the hell they want. Yeah. I have started talking about the five-hour workday because I think people need more time. I want to set people free. I want to bring them in their potential. Because I know, I can feel it, that eight hours is just not the right amount of time for high productive creative work. I often find myself using micro, micro breaks, like Facebook checking, Instagram, all those little things that actually <coughs> destroy creativity. Like fragmenting um, your day. Like. Yeah, and, or read the, the, the newspapers, etc. I think that's different. That they actually get something out of it more than the micro fragging with the, I think. That's, might be true, but in the end, it's that I rarely really work for eight hours in a row, mm -hmm. highly productive. So I use this five hour thing, which is great to talk about something else. It's about the culture and the mindset and how do it's you fake. treat, how do you treat people? And in Germany, often I hear stories about management positions and the culture of management that is so 50s, 60s or so bad at all. I wonder why the why the fuck do the people do that? It's just it's just wrong. And if you look at it um, psychologically or scientifically, when people get afraid, and that happens when management threats you, uh, threatens you, mm -hmm. uh, they can't work creat creatively, and they they can't connect with the colleagues and everything because. Are you trying to say when I whip my creative team, they don't get better? Should I stop whipping them? Don't whip them. Don't whip them? No. Is there waterboarding? Should I Release move on them. to waterboarding? Yeah, move on to waterboarding. <laughs> I'll only do it for five hours at a time. That's yeah, a... five hour water, waterboarding will, will make the difference. Okay, so <laughs> what I understand from you then, it's basically, it's an icebreaker, right? To get past the conventions. Yes. Do we know, I mean, you must be an expert on this now. Do you know how we ended up at eight hours? What, what, what? Yes, uh, it's 24 hours divided by three because it's uh, industrial processes. Okay, so this goes back to Taylor and factories and yes. assembly. Henry and Ford actually released, uh, they invented, well, Henry Ford didn't invent it, but he started it in production to having eight hour workdays. And then it was just three, like, uh, what is it, sets of workers yeah. coming in. And he said if they work less, they have more money for leisure uh, and time for leisure, and they can actually buy my Ford T model. Oh, we're surrounded by Ferraris. Yeah, so just a regular class, regular day. Regular day in Berlin. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh no, that's an Aston Martin and a Porsche. Yeah. The Porsche. Maybe, maybe we could we could ask him. If he, <laughs> hey, you leaking some. gas, buddy? <laughs> <laughs> no, um, I'm I'm fascinated by how we all still struggle with. 
how to, how to say, unlearned stuff that was a legacy from the industrial age. Yes. The, the David Marquet, the submarine captain, yeah. who says, we're still thinking in this blue work and red work, you know, yeah. the guy who thinks and the guy who does. Yeah. We are saying the whole concept in, in the video game industry, in the creative industry, we are, the old models just don't work, period. Just make it up by yourself. But I think what, what you're doing, which is very cool, is to give them something to rub against, right? Like a yeah. new impulse. Yes. And I have talked a lot about all of the things that actually lead to an eight-hour workday or the concept that people have in management and so on. And I think it starts with the school system, how you grow up and how the school teaches you there's a wrong and a right way. Actually, I think that's a problem. There are many teachers or people in education, they know that it's shit and they would love to see change. But because of the political like uh, periods of mm. power, you don't have much time to, to, to implement change. And you, fundamental change. Yeah, fundamental change, yeah. yeah. And no one wants to do this fundamental change because they, um, they are afraid of losing the power. I, I would argue the same thing is true yeah. in large organizations. It's very similar to political structures, right? My CEO contract is only four years or we think in quarters and... Exactly, that's so silly. That's so silly. So, first meeting. Lasse yeah. walks into his new company. Yeah and says, what the bleep, guys? Um, I met my new team in September 2017. So you took a company over that was established? That yeah, the, they okay. were on the market like for five to eight or 10 years, I don't know. And the former guys that run it, they couldn't be bothered to work together anymore. So they asked me, hey, we, want, we don't want our team to be unemployed. Yeah. Would you like to just buy us? Yeah. <laughs> I said, yeah, sure, <laughs> good thing, let's do it. <laughs> Um, we'll put a number on this piece of paper and yeah. slide it over to you. We'll leave the room. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Pretty much. Okay. Uh, I then deleted some zeros from the end and then it worked out. <laughs> <laughs> so I knew I had to meet all the new team members. Okay. I didn't meet them before actually signing the buying contract. Uh -huh. um, and I didn't oh, wow, know shit. you bought the cat in yes. the box. Yes, I did. I did. The cat in the hat. I did, yeah, I did. So I had this one meeting in a coffee store in Bielefeld. Uh -huh. And I actually prepared it with a coach. We did, uh, we did work f on that meeting. What's the agenda? What's the story? What do I want to transport as a information to them? Okay. And uh, we have to turn here soon or we will park. No, we will charge okay, perfect. because this is where our coffee is. And I'm not going to have to come up with a not crash into our production car. Um, or any other car. So the first time when I walked up to the team, yeah. I actually explained myself. What did I do for a living and why? why? I just, first of all, I just bought you. You're mine. Yeah, you're mine. Now that's actually the, Your ass that was the, the, the third chapter. Of After that, game. you had their hearts. Now, they knew my face because I was running the other agency, which is way bigger, uh, bigger than them. You should have said no because I was in the news a lot. That would have been... <laughs> they, no. they knew me because so, who doesn't? Yeah, not, not back then. <laughs> not back then. <laughs> Let's just go get coffee. Awesome. And we need to charge this because <laughs> we're not getting home. <laughs> yeah, the one car was leaking gasoline and the other yeah, one was out of battery. It was really great. <laughs> Leaders in cars getting stuck in a coffee place. I just managed to open the door. Yeah, yeah, just shuffled, shuffled through. This is interesting when we talk about digitalization. All the people think, yeah, let's, let's use Office 365, let's do this and that. It's all about culture. It's, most of it is culture, it's not technology. Technology has been around for 100 years. It's always interesting when people do workshops with us when they implement our technology and they say, everything you've done so far sounds like design thinking. Enjoy, this is awesome. <laughs> uh -huh. um, Sounds like design thinking and agile, but you haven't used the word once. And we're mm -hmm. saying, well, it doesn't matter. It's just, these are methods. There will be other methods. There were methods before, there will be methods after. But basically, there are a lot of companies who have done this kind of stuff, this kind of, what we call the network organization, which focuses on how to do it right for you in whichever industry is in. They've done this before technology. They just focused on their culture and they did it very consequent, you know? So you didn't say, let's try to do a little bit less than eight hours, right? You gave them a number and you said, let's try to do it in that time. Yeah. What needs to go? And 
it went in that side article, the most recent one, <laughs> I think. Or was it Süddeutsche? Or was it the Bravo? I don't know. Um, they also had this, you come into your office and it's kind of disappointing. We were in, you know, envisioning something flashy and it, it was like, oh, well, it doesn't distract us. We, we just work here. You know, but they they assume that you have mm -hmm. this sort of Google office because you do something revolutionary. Yeah, and some people think, let's just put in some kicker here, some table soccer, and we will be the new work superstars, and everything will be better after that. It's not about the table soccer thing, not at all. Actually, do you have a table soccer thing? That's where the DeLorean stands. Okay. We had a choice between the foosball table and, and the, the DeLorean. DeLorean. <laughs> that was easy. <laughs> okay. Yeah, that's great. Do you have any rules around the five-hour workday? Yeah, we have, a, we have a lot of rules, but it's not really strict. Um, some of them are strict, some of them are not really strict. What's the most strict for you? What would you say? What's... Uh, let, let's rephrase the question. What's the most strict for my project managers? Or for my colleagues, it's there's no meeting without an agenda, and the like the target behind the meeting. Mm. And I'm quite lazy often, and I just invite people there. Yeah, we will tomorrow morning, eight o'clock, talk about whatever, like the title of the of the invitation. Ministerium for irgendwas. Yes, and then they all say decline. I'm sorry, there's no, nothing in here I can work with. Goodbye. Go back, think about it, and come back again. And that's quite cool. Because people then really have to think, hey, what do you want, or what do we want to achieve in that meeting, and who needs to be there, and what's the agenda? And I love that your people feel they can decline your invite. But I hate it. That, <laughs> but this means we've. When I, mm -hmm. So often I sit in my office and I go, I just want the fuckers to do what I tell them, <laughs> but I'm so happy they don't, because. Mm -hmm. It, that means either they, they don't quite get what I want, or they think it's shit. Either way, we should stop and talk first. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. All right? Mm -hmm. And I think a lot of companies don't even get to that point because people are just like, what do you want us to install? A cheating device and the diesel engines? Sure, by all means. By Friday? Okay. It's no problem. I accept the meeting and the task, right? Mm -hmm. Exactly. And basically, but and that's the culture of fear. They're afraid of actually. I saw, I saw a wonderful documentary on Patagonia, mm -hmm. Yvon Chinard, mm -hmm. and he said he had some psychologists coming to the office and do a study on the workplace and stuff. And he said, "You have a problem and an opportunity. The problem is that." These people are unemployable in any other company. The way they work when they feel they want to go running, hiking, surfing, they mm -hmm. just do. But they also don't take orders. Mm -hmm. right? They'll do the best for the product and the best for the environment, but if you give them an order, they will say, oh, we're very, we're, we're adults, we don't take orders. Mm -hmm. right? The risk is you need to disrupt your business from time to time to stay relevant and usually these disruptions don't come out of the running business. Mm -hmm. So how do, you, how do you manage to be directive or disruptive in your company as a leader when you have a workforce that has been taught to be resistant in a way, positively resistant, right? Mm -hmm. And he said, well, we struggle, we struggle with that. Is that something that you feel? Is that something where you sometimes feel like you need to push him on something? Some people have better skills in overseeing the output or the, the impact of their work. And some are not, some do not, you know? Some people are keen on getting the product finished, and some could take like weeks. And that's so, that's when I feel I have to push them, or guide them, let's say guide them, coach them. Because in the end I have to pay. You know, you always try to find a mantra or a slogan for your company that encapsulates what you do, but differentiates you from the herd, right? Mm -hmm. And we've come up with all sort of wild slogans, but we had our team on site from all over the world last week again. And I talked to one of our latest joiners from Serbia. And he said, well, you know, I don't really know what, what slogans you have on the wall right now, improving the human condition and stuff like that. But the story that you told me was, 
when your dad came home from work, he was happy. Mm -hmm. And he was full of energy. And he talked about what he did and he loved it. And he brought posters of the products home. Mm -hmm. That was not like that in my family. Mm -hmm. my, my, my parents were decent people and they hated their lives because of their work. You know, and I think, I mean, if there's anything that we can contribute with new ideas like this to try to nudge it in the opposite direction and when I talked to my dad about this and he said well wow I mean back when you were a kid I mean we we're getting old now mm -hmm. they still work Saturdays and there was like this um, initiative um, Saturdays daddy is mine or something and then they stopped working on Saturday I mean we went you also went to school still on Saturdays half day Right, and suddenly I we, did. we reduced this, but he said, I, I didn't mind that I loved going there and then we did something cool after, you know? So I think if we, if we figure out how to give people this flexibility on one side, but meaning in the job, I mean, if you hate those five hours that you're there, then it doesn't matter at all. No, nothing, exactly. That's because it's not about the hours, it's about the culture and the work itself. How do you get that to people though, who come to you now where you say, you know what, you might be able to implement this, but the five hours that you're there, people still hate their lives. How do you break that to them? I don't work with those companies. You basically, like in the beginning, you say that might not work yeah. out for you? Okay. Uh, I had this employer branding discussion with one of the potential clients. Yeah. And the boss wasn't there, it was just he sent the IT boss or the IT manager and the marketing manager. Good sign. Good, yeah, good sign. And um, they told me how many people they need to employ. And I look through the Kununu ratings, like the employer ratings, and they were all like, shit. I told them, hey, this looks completely disastrous. And they said, yeah, but that's only the assholes we fire. <laughs> and then I told them, yeah, but this is where people look. And give me, give me a reason, why should I work for you? Uh, yeah, because we have this great job as a, 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 a job as an accountant. It's great. Yeah, but until we fire you. Until we fire you, and until you talk to colleagues, because we hate each other. Um, what I concluded is, they don't have any purpose, any vision, they don't have any culture that is worth going there. Uh, so I told them, hey, you really have to think about how you treat people, how you see people, and why you make the difference to the world as a company. And, and I think this, this is also a bit of a misunderstood concept, because, um, Purpose doesn't necessarily mean you are Elon Musk and you are saving the world. You can take pride and purpose in making great shoes, you know, or, or whatever. But Sustainable shoes, whatever, yeah, sure. But you need something that the people believe in while they're doing the job, right? And that, I think the, the profit purpose alone is not enough. And that's where many organizations, they've replaced why are we doing this? Why is this meaningful with what do we need to survive and what do we need to grow? Yeah. So what was the reaction of your employees when you first brought it up? They didn't believe me. Uh, they didn't know if they had to laugh about it, if it was a joke, okay. if it was a trick question, you know? <laughs> yeah. And does this guy want to see if we are up for our work job? The lawyers, she asked me if it's a trick to get rid of all the people with like lifetime contracts. Because, yeah, because if they were to make it in five hours, obviously they didn't want to work before as they had to because of the contract, so kick them out. It was funny, I, uh, I, I explained my sympathy for her job, uh, and the guys, yeah, they didn't know if I would take the piss or not, but I was serious. When, so, did they, when did they start taking you serious? When did they understand that you were serious about it? Five minutes later? One minute later? When you really did like, no, no, this no, no, is happening. This is happening. And we will do it. And we like will, the first, like, was there like a first day when you tried it? No, actually, I, my plan was to introduce it in summer 2018, just like half of a year later, but realized quickly that this is a big break and a big change for everyone, when I, me as a new boss. And the clients don't know me, and I thought after a day or two, I have to introduce it earlier, mm -hmm. because it's easier to have a big bang than to incrementally go there. I'm with you. And um, I was a bit afraid that I will not have the guts to introduce it half a year later. Yeah. 
That's why I, that was the reason. I, it was two weeks after I took over the company. So and was it like one o'clock, and then everybody was like, "Well, I guess." Yeah, it felt strange for everyone. Yeah, yeah, it felt really strange. And we did. We were very strict on it. We said from eight to one, hundred percent, and at one o'clock, drop your pants. Not those pants. The pen. <laughs> drop the pen. Well, um, because then you can really see and identify all the processes that are not working properly. Because then you can tell, oh, fuck, I didn't finish this, and this is bloody important. Shit, why didn't I make it? Yeah. That was very, a lot, of, lot to be learned there. And you said also a lot came down to meetings, right? Meeting culture Yeah, meeting a lot. culture, the communication, we, we kicked Slack, we got it back with more rules. I wanted to hug you, but you brought it back. Um, no, not Slack, something else, but okay. with rules. We implemented rules for using like this internal communication tools and I set up like physical areas where people meet now quickly and we have half past one there's a support slot where everyone could be approached by other people for those questions hey you know what I have this little question and then it takes one minute and everyone is happy with slack it would have taken all day and there are studies when you are you, when when you lose focus when you get out of um, studies hold on let yeah. me find the cue card part i think that it's not in there it's not in there but but you can you can shuffle around awesome um when you get distracted in a task you were in the flow you were in the zone you were very productive when you get distracted it takes 15 minutes to get back so when you get distracted Unless like train i can do two things i can multitask. no you can't sorry what did you say <laughs> <laughs> I love it. Yeah, but look at this. This is how work used to be back then. And this guy, he was a musician, and he got killed by the bus. And it didn't matter. You know, it didn't matter if he was a musician. It didn't matter if he got killed because that job he did was. Well, he didn't so get killed by a bus. He got killed by a horse carriage. This horse carriage. <laughs> yeah. No, that's a post. Yeah. Okay. Then his Are wife we? had to pick up to support the family working in the fields. <laughs> what, but she, it was okay because she started her own business doing <laughs> chewing gum. And she's a multi-billionaire now. And her son is Neil Armstrong and went to the moon. Look at the proud mom. That's her <laughs> watching TV when Neil stepped on the moon and said, it's one small step for That's a football table. <laughs> <laughs> that was awesome. I'm always, I was reminded again when I read your the premise of your book and we talked about it the first time I think we talked about this in the juleps you remember Momo? yeah you remember the Stundenblume the, 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 the flower that they had that symbolizes time and then the petals would fall yes. off and that's how long they yes. have yes. to walk and, and the one is, is grey and pale yeah exactly yeah. but they work a lot right and they sell these stupid dolls and yeah and then they die and then they die right? because <laughs> yes. they run out of cigar and, exactly. and, and stuff like this but that for me is literally like the only currency that matters in your life is time and at the end of your life, when you ask somebody, what do you regret the most? It's never, I wish I'd worked more. Exactly. You know, it's yeah. time with your father, time with your daughter, time with your son yeah. or something, or with your partner. But, but then when we have it, right now, when we're in our prime, we feel we have no alternative. We have to. In, in the worst way, I think this is more on a on sort of a, a leadership level, people are so in this current of work it's so hard to get yourself out of it sometimes you need somebody else to say yeah you need your boss to tell you you stay at home yeah i have people i they, they needed me to tell them you know you go home now i don't want you here yeah and that's i, I feel responsible for my team yeah. i have one colleague he wanted to quit being a software developer although he's great he's great and he loves it he wanted to quit because he couldn't learn by himself in free time when he is home you know he, he's very up for learning new things new concepts new stuff new languages and this sort of thing he wanted to quit because what as, as soon as he got home it was dark he didn't have any energy he wanted a beer and a bed nothing else and he told me yeah he told me this concept is so great because every other day i come into the office tell the people what i learned because i had energy I was so up for it, and everyone everyone gets out of something out of it. I think in order for our film guys to be able to go home at some point, we have to get back in the car. Otherwise, let's do it. Let's, let's do, do it. it. Is it the Porsche now? Is it fixed? <laughs> yeah, look, it's burning over there. We just have to follow the <laughs> smoke. <laughs> <laughs>
Hey, have you been in a Tesla before? Yeah. In this Model 3? No. More or less. Oh, sorry, only more or less. <laughs> All the time. Since, since we're at a stoplight now, I could just... Mm -hmm. It is. It 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 is all right. It's, it's, all, it's okay. All right. It's okay. It is okay. <laughs> wow, that's nice. It's even faster than the S. No, it isn't. Because it's lighter. Is it okay? It, feel, it feels. I think that the, the top ver version of the Model S is still a little bit faster. Yeah, my best but friend has one, a, has a hundred D. But this it, one feels wow. quite because it's lighter. You know, so it feels more of a rush. It's very nice. It's very nice, right? What's next for you? What is? Where do you want to go next? As a leader, um, thinking about what would I like to do next is have more impact, have drive change forward, because I, I can feel. And the more I read or talk about it, or get questions about it, I feel it is so needed. We need this change, not about the five-hour thing, the concept behind it. Where it work. Yeah. Yeah, and this is. I think this will either become the moment for the German economy when we make it. Yeah, so we, we live there right if, now. If, if we can innovate the system work, yeah, not the, the products. I think that's the long tail of changing work. Also, it's been a complete joy having you in this. Thank you very much for Thank taking you. the time. It, it is half an hour past one. So oh, wow. you have to start a little bit later tomorrow. Thank you. That's generous. <laughs> Great. Thank you very much. <laughs> but that's just because the car broke. So unforeseen circumstances let us, you know, be yeah. flexible about the concept. Exactly. It's all about the work hours. It's about the outcome, which has been great, I think. I thank loved you. it. I loved it. Thank you very much. And thank you. Well, thanks to Vietnam. So I am excited. What are you going to do? Are you going to introduce the five hour workday in your organization? Are you going to keep time recording? Or are you going to abolish time recording? In any case, we as leaders should create workplaces where everybody can give their personal best. It's on us to figure it out what it is. Thank you for being with us. There's a lot more great stuff to come. Enjoy the next episodes.